So here's the quarter rib. Uh, what I did was uh, put it in my mill and I used the biggest ball end mill I've got to uh, make the two barrel profiles and I'll have to uh, come in and fit these to actually fit the barrel but uh, this gets me fairly close to start with and then uh, what I did was uh, after I had these two machines then I turned it on its side in my mill and used a three inch um, face cutter to come down and just kind of work my way into it and uh, that gives me this uh, ramp in the front and this actually um, this is actually the quarter rib extension and the front base the front sight base what I'll do is I'll put this in my bandsaw cut it in two and then uh, clean all this up and that'll give me my quarter rib section and then later on, um, you know, usually I can't get away with doing this, but since these barrels uh, don't have very much difference um, in diameter, their length, uh, what I'll be able to do is, uh, because this is, um, you know, pretty close to a bowl barrel basically, it doesn't have very much taper, I'll be able to machine and fit this down just a little bit further and it'll make the uh, front sight base. So, of course, it'll have to have a slot machined in it for the front sight and all that, but uh, you get the idea. Is, uh, this is kind of a, a quick way to, to do both parts at the same time um, without having to set up twice to do this. So, anyways, I'll cut this off and I'll get this section fitted and soldered in place in here and uh, then I'll be able to come in and machine the slope into the top of the quarter rib itself and I'll be able to machine the um, dovetail for the express sights. So that's where I'm at today and uh, I'll get busy on this and I'll show you what it looks like when it's soldered on and, and we'll go from there. So this is all soldered on now. Uh, the way I did this, uh, because the forearm hangers on the bottom side and you can't really blow heat up in between the barrels anymore in this section. So in order to get this to make a real strong solid joint, what I did was uh, I uh, you know, took time and, and fitted the, the two profiles of the barrel into the contours of the bottom of the quarter rib. And then I came in and I took a Dremel and just kind of grooved a little groove on the midpoint of the radius in there. Enough to where I could uh, put my solder in. Then I tinned everything up, fluxed it, tinned it up real good, uh, the barrel and the quarter rib extension, and then uh, put a piece of my solder in, um, you know, in the groove that I had, had uh, kind of quickly dug into it, put a piece of my solder in, and uh, clamped everything in place. Then I turned the whole piece upside down and applied my heat to the quarter rib itself, and uh, with the wicking action of the solder and a little bit of gravity has and hurt, that's why I like to turn it upside down because of course heat rises and makes the whole job easier. But uh, turn it upside down and, and heat it up on the center of the quarter rib and let the wicking action and a little gravity draw the um, solder out. And so it gives you a real nice solid joint, fills in the whole, you know, if, you're, if your fit up is good and you've got a nice contour that matches. Um, it just fills everything in real nice, wicks the solder right out. You can see this nice silver joint that runs the whole length of this. Uh, once that's cleaned up, of course, that'll completely disappear, but uh, you know, it just makes a really nice, solid, solid joint all the way around. So that's the way that's done. And uh, it's just a, you know, the more stuff you start putting on these barrels and the more stuff you get on here, the, the less access you have to the inside edges of the of your joints and so you kind of got to start working from different angles to get this stuff to to really attach and make good joints and bonds but that's how it's done okay you can see I've got my quarter rib machine down now and uh, what you'll notice here is is I got the uh, express side just sitting on top here approximately where it's going to go what I'm going to have to do is uh, machine across this and remove the some depth to, to get the um, express sight to drop down in there but uh, because of how shallow this quarter rib is and because these barrels don't have a, a real you know defined profile to them uh, this quarter rib sits just barely above the barrels and by the time I machine down in uh, to make the dovetail for this well I won't be able to actually push it into a standard dovetail because I'll be below the top line of the barrels and so there won't be any way to drift it in there and get it in position. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, machine this wide longer than the sight base is and then I'll dovetail one end of it and I'll put a, a clamping piece in the other end of it so that when this can be dropped down in and then the little piece can be put on and it'll be drilled and tapped and you'll be able to tighten the screw down and that'll lock the sight 
in position that way. Um, and I knew this was going to happen when I first designed this on paper. I knew that because of the shallowness of the quarter rib and the and the lack of barrel profile, that I wouldn't have a quarter rib that came up proud of the barrels very far. And so I figured this was the way I was going to end up doing this. Um, <clears throat> and it's not too uncommon to see them like this. Uh, of course, most of the originals, 1850, they didn't because they typically had a, a profiled barrel on them, so it wasn't much of an issue. But uh, it's not uncommon to see them with a, a screw and a clamping piece on the back side here that uh, you know pulls it down in tight and holds it in position. So, pretty normal way to do it if you don't have enough clearance to actually cut a standard dovetail and, and drift your sight in from one side or the other. So, that's how I'm going to end up doing it. So there's the quarter rib and the express side in place and the uh, little plate that acts as a clamp to clamp the sight in. Um, like I said, not not necessarily traditional on a gun that you know would be from the 1850s, but not out of place either. I've seen some uh, flintlock and uh, caplock German rifles that had a setup sort of similar to this. Um, so it does date back a ways. It's been done before, um, but it's one way to resolve the problem of of uh, you know being below the the top line of the barrels and your quarter rib not coming up. You know, usually what you'd see on a normal quarter rib is uh, you know you'd have your fairly straight section where your chambers were and your uh, monoblock and then you'd have a fairly rapid taper and then you'd have a transitional taper that ran out this way a ways and then you'd have a secondary taper that ran on out to the muzzle so you usually have a, a multiple profile barrel but because the customer requested that these be a uh, you know very very shallow taper and almost be a bull barrel um, that doesn't give you much transition here so this uh, quarter rib just doesn't stick up very much and because of the size of these barrels and the deep um, dish of the valley in between it takes a lot of width to uh, fill in that space and make it look um, proportional. Unfortunately they don't make sights that are as wide as the you know what's really required. Um, what would really be needed to make this look um, you know truly proportional would be a, a one inch wide sight basically to make it all look the same. But uh, anyways you get the idea. It uh, turned out pretty nice and it definitely locks the sight in nice and tight so it doesn't move around. It uh, works real good for that. And it's real easy to adjust. Loosen a couple screws, put it wherever you want. Tighten them back down, you're good to go. I'll uh, move the camera here and I'll get you a profile shot so that you can see what it looks like. Uh, this rib's just setting on there because I just wanted you to see how it'd look with it all tied together. Um, pretty simple stuff, but that's pretty much the, where the rib's going to sit you know, when it's finished. So that's basically what it'll look like. I'll move this down and get you a profile shot so that you can see what it looks like in profile, and and then I'll move on to working on the next pieces. You can see it uh, pretty much is you know, even with the top of the barrel back here and it raises up just a little bit um, and that's just you know basically the amount of the taper is all it really raises up but uh, it's actually more than it looks like I mean it looks really really subtle but if you lay a straight edge on it and kinda get a look at how much gap there is from end to end you'll get the idea that it really does have a little bit of, a little bit of angle to it so but like I said, that's uh, you know really compared to a normal double rifle, something that's a, a normal caliber. Um, you know these barrels just have such a deep valley to them; it's really difficult to to get that look that you'd typically see on a on a regular quarter rib, where it actually had some some rise up here. Because it's not really that the quarter rib is is standing up tall; it's the fact that the barrels taper down. So, but anyways, that turned out pretty nice. Looks looks pretty decent. And it'll definitely work for a functional site. So, guess now I'll move on to uh, working on some of the bottom stuff on this section, shaping these sides out, and uh, working on that uh, under lever. See if I can get that all done by the end of the week, like I'm hoping to. There's basically, two kinds of bellies. Uh, the belly being the bottom of the action. Uh, you got a flat belly, which is what this one's going to be, or you can get a round belly. And uh, you know, if you're going to do a round belly, uh, you have to start out with a little extra material. Uh, you need enough space that, uh, because the because the Jones underlever shoulders to the bottom of the action, you have to leave enough material that you can remove the excess around it and uh, basically sculpt it down from your center point out, and still have enough to leave your flat surface 
where your contact point is on your joints on the under lever section. So uh, if you're going to do a round belly you start out with just a little extra material that way you leave a flat and you can radius everything down and bring it out into a nice you know, clean radius basically starting from about the the midpoint of your uh, water table down and carry it into the midpoint there give you a uh, kind of a real shallow arc basically uh, if you're gonna do a flat belly though it's quite a bit easier and uh, you can start out with your you know minimum amount of material from from uh, top of your breech face to bottom of your action because this is gonna stay flat and then you're just gonna take the corners off and just radius them down and uh, so pretty simple and uh, the only thing I ever worry about is uh, I really don't want to get into the pin at all because um, if this pin ever has to be replaced or taken out or for whatever reason uh, guns do wear and then the next person who has to put this pin in they have to recontour it to match the shape so um, I usually stop my radius right at the edge of the pin and uh, just keep it one even radius all the way around and it's real simple to do um, I just knock the, the bulk of the high point off with a four inch grinder just being real careful not to get into anything that I'd already shaped and, and taken care of and then I came in with files and just uh, you know draw file it down just like um, doing any of the other radiuses you just work it from larger flats down to smaller flats until you get a nice even radius out of it so this is one side done I'll uh, flip it around and do the other side but uh, that's basically it for uh, shaping that. Uh, the rest of this is just polish work to get rid of the uh, mill scale and whatnot that's you know the original um, metal itself and this is just a little high um, from when I first made it and I'll have to draw file that down to bring it down to an even even edge there but uh, this is about it. So I machined the <coughs> under lever part down to the height that I want it to be and uh, then I machined a groove in it and what I'll do is I will make the rest of the handle so that it matches the radius and drops into the groove so it's basically like a slot, a slot, a key basically is how I want to say that and then I'll weld in all the seams so that the seams disappear then I'll shape and contour the whole thing and, and of course shape it up over the trigger guard and whatnot. Um, several videos ago I showed you that this doesn't come to uh, a true full 90 degree rotation it stops short so there it is in the open position and when you close it it stops at a slight angle to the action it doesn't run true center line and that's pretty much ideal that's how I want it to be uh, that way you know like I said before in time it can wear in if it needs to and uh, it'll line up on center over time but uh, pretty normal standard practice is to leave them sitting off to the side just a little bit and that keeps them you know so that as time goes by they wear in properly so I'll get on with making the handle for it now so what I did to make the handle was uh, took a piece of oversized flat stock uh, that was right thickness and I machined the uh, radius into it uh, coming in from an end cut machined the radius in the flat stock and then I cut away the material so that it would drop down into the key section and match the radius on the back of the locking piece and then I uh, beveled all the edges and uh, welded it up solid and once I did that then it was a matter of um, just a forge operation basically um, heat beat and repeat until I got the correct shape to match the contours of the trigger guard and make the proper clearances and uh, it does have to have a little bit of clearance you can't get it super super tight to the trigger guard because it has to have enough clearance that uh, when you close it this leading edge here will clear the edges of your trigger guard so it always has a little gap in it and of course you want to leave a little gap um, so that it doesn't scrape the trigger guard and you want to leave it so that it's a little shallow and doesn't scrape the body of the action because otherwise it'll just leave a gouge in the uh, finish whatever you know this is this one here is going to be case hardened but if it was blued or whatever it would still if it was scraping it would scrape the finish off so you, it has to have a little gap underneath of it here and it has to have clearance to clear the edge and it has to have a gap so it doesn't scrape the finish off of the trigger guard but uh, right now it's a little tight but uh, there's no oil or anything on it right now so well, with proper gun oil and stuff it'll actually rotate a little easier and a little farther uh, right now you can see that uh, 
with a little force I can bring it to the point where I want it and it's you can see that it's setting about 85 degrees to the trigger guard um, another five degrees bring it to a true 90 um, that's pretty much where I want it to be uh, like I said with a little oil and stuff when it's all finished and of course when the surfaces are hardened that'll make it even smoother but uh, <coughs> It'll turn just a little bit further, and so it'll probably end up at about 87, 88 degrees to the center line, which should be just about perfect, and that'll give it some wear ability, and uh, everything should work really good. So now what i got to do is i got to drill the hole, countersink it, and build the bolt that'll hold it into the action body, and then I've got to tap the action itself and uh, put a set screw in from the other side. So that's where I'm at now. And I'm going to drill that and do that next. Well, I didn't get the uh, bolt in. I didn't get the bolt made. I had it uh, almost finished on my lathe and was just making the last couple passes on threading it. And uh, we're in the middle of a tornado warning thunderstorm here. And uh, my power flickered and totally ate the threads on my nice little bolt. So I'm pretty much done for the week. Um, I'm not going to mess with anything with the power flickering on and off. So uh, basically, all I wanted to do was just kind of put it together and, and show you what it's going to look like. Since basically it's it's all but finished um, for this part. Um, you know, it needs to be firing pins need to be put in, and the retaining nuts made for them. And I need to do this bolt down here. But uh, otherwise, the overall look of the action and and whatnot is basically finished. So I thought I'd kind of put it all together and and give you an idea of what it looks like. The uh, front sight base is just sitting on there. I didn't actually do anything with it yet because that's one of the final things to be done. But uh, it'll, of course, get shaved off and the sight will get cut and all that. But uh, I just set it up on there to kind of give you a general set of looks on how the gun's going to look. Overall, for as big a gun as it is, for how dimensionally thick and, and wide and everything it is, it's got a pretty good, pretty good graceful look to it and the uh, tangs and the grip area so overall I think it's going to have a, a nice set of proportions for for as big a caliber as it is anyways that's going to be it for the week like I said the power has given me issues and I'm not going to mess around with machine and anything else with power flickering so Monday I will uh, get the bolt in and get that made and, and put in the, for the second time and uh, I'll get the firing pins done and the retainers and all that stuff done for them so but that's where it's at, and it, uh, it's actually turning out to be a pretty nice rifle.